Hello YouTubers, welcome to my channel. I am excited today to start to really give this channel a little bit more education about the things that we as Americans need to understand. Considering we have a woman trying to perpetrate her way into our lives here in America as a British royalty, and we as Americans need to be understanding, well, what does this all mean? Because I think Megan is pretty savvy enough to understand that we as Americans may not be paying attention to what it is that she might be trying to do over here in America as somewhat of a, a fraud of uh, royalty. But we're not going to let that happen. We're going to educate ourselves about the things that we were once unaware of. We're going to start to really understand the history behind the British monarchy and really get ourselves a little bit more educated about what all of this means. And it starts here today as I declare before you all that we shall become more educated about the British monarchy. And as they say, the empire in which the sun never sets is a very famous saying because the monarchy was so big and vast that no matter where you were in the world, the empire that ruled the world was always in daylight and we shall always be in the light when it comes to understanding the history and the comings and goings of all these things around royalty. We shall become more educated and bring our minds into the light and not be in darkness. How about that? We are never going to be in darkness again about all of this. So whatever Harry and his wife think they got going over and trying to perpetrate here in America, we're going to be a step ahead of them, understanding exactly what is going on. And I think to begin that we're going to start to understand a little bit more about the British monarchy. And I'm so excited about this because when I had the conversation with my son, I haven't posted the video yet, but I will. We didn't understand. He even asked me this question about, well, what does all of this mean with the British monarchy? Do they have power? Like, why do they exist? And it's it's a very good time for us to really start to understand some of the history behind that. So we know that Queen Victoria was the longest reigning queen before what we have now is Queen Elizabeth II. So when I graduated college, one of the first gifts, gifts that I received um, when I graduated was this book from my, my husband and my son. And this book really goes into all the kings and the queens of England, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland. I wanted to go through some of these, but really pay attention to that of which Queen Victoria's reign began, because this was a first of a lot of new things that we still use today. Now, she reigned for 63 years. She lived from 1837 to 1901. The population of the United Kingdom almost doubled from 25 million to 45 million people when Queen Victoria began her accession to the throne. Her time coincided with an unprecedented period of scientific inventions, innovation, immense social and political and economic change, and a huge expansion of the British um, power around the globe and the transformation of the monarchy. Yes, this is when the monarchy officially started to change from what it used to be to something more constitutional in its model that would be recognized still today. And that is what we find within the royal uh, family today and how they rule and what they what they mean all began around this time. So when her reign began, it was the first time for the railways, the postage stamps, trade unions, electric light, the machine gun, 
the machine gun, the dum dum bullet. <laughs> I don't know much about the dum dum bullet, but it was called the dum dum bullet. The London Underground, Marks and Spencer, which I'm sure that is a British thing because that's not something that I know much about, but it's pretty popular, I am sure, over in England. The Salvation Army. And the motor car, barbed wires, radio signals, x-rays, like all these things were coming into new right around the time of Queen Victoria's reign. And she was the first British monarch to actually be photographed. And here is a picture of her. She made the first ever private telephone call from her house in the Isle of Wight in 1878 and margarine became a thing back then and the and table tennis was invented along with christmas cards manufactured cigarettes records record players gas fires escalators man-made fibers diesel engines cash registers and carpet sweepers all of these things were around the time of Queen Victoria. Isn't that something? So sh the history behind Queen Victoria and who she was a descendant of is, is interesting to note because it talks a little bit about that and I'm gonna go into like who her parents were. So her parents were Edward Duke of Kent, the son of George III and Victoria of Saxe Coburg Southfield. And they were German descendants. That's very important to know. Um, and she was the, well, let's go back to George III's granddaughter um, was Victoria, a mixture of Hanover, on her father's side and Saxe Coburg on her mother's side. Now, after Princess Charlotte died in 1817, George IV's younger brother um, bestirred themselves to find wives and gave the family a legitimate heir. Edward, Duke of Kent, the fourth son of George III, abandoned his French mistress and married Princess Victoria of saxe coburg Southfield. And this is the parent mother of Queen Victoria. A widow with, she had, a, she was a widow with two children by her first husband. She was 31 to his 50 years and the sister of Prince Leopold, Charlotte's widower. And this is stuff that we'll learn about later, like the build up the history to Queen um, Elizabeth, uh, Queen Victoria. But this is a little bit about her history. Um, she duly gave birth to a daughter, Alexandria Victoria, the future queen of which I was speaking about. So Edward soon died in 1820, apparently to general relief. And his um, daughter would have no mercy on him. Usually a woman of her class, the widowed duchess suckled the babies herself instead of relying on a wet nurse. Now I'm sure you know what that means, right? Like she was breastfeeding the child instead of having another woman breastfeed her child, which they called a wet nurse at the time. Now she depended heavily on her brother for money and support and Uncle Leopold was the nearest thing to young Victoria who was like a father to her. Victoria grew up in shabby apartments in Kensington Palace, and we know Kensington Palace is where Princess Diana later lived, where her mother's head of household was Sir John Conroy, who believed rightly or wrongly that his wife was a bastard daughter of Victoria's father, the Duke of Kent. A lot of things going on back then with illegitimate children and the unrecognized children um, of that time. And it was a big deal during that time. It's not so much today, but back then a big deal. And I think that is why we have a lot of the issues around the marriage of Princess Diana and who she came from because was she of a good family and class like that's this is why all of that was important and why Charles had to marry a woman like Princess Diana because all this history prior to it was made a big deal about your class your social class and if you were a bastard child or not 
um, where you came from was very, very important. And then as we can see with Miss Megan, like her family, where you still come from today matters because then you get issues like what we're dealing with with Prince Harry. And this is why these things were important because you wanted to keep the line of secession going on with very high standing people that had a good name. And as we see with trying to be a little bit more liberal with all of these things, you, you have problems. But then you also have issues where you're not really in love and then you have rebels like Prince Harry wanting to just go off the rails because he's married to someone who didn't come from a place where she really would fit into such a family. So there's a lot of problems that coincide with who you marry. And this was, has been going on for since the beginning of the establishment of the monarchy. Um, so Victoria's father, um, Duke of Kent, he always believed that, um, rightly or wrongly that his wife was um, a bastard daughter of Victoria's father, the Duke of Kent. So gossip improperly made him the Duchess's lover and he hoped to dominate the princess's future court, meaning Queen Victoria. Uh, William IV used to call him King John. Victoria always slept in her mother's bed and she was kept away from the court and her half cousins. Uh, William's illegitimate children. And when they talk about the court, the people used to all congregate together in these big castles and they weren't separated off into these apartments is what I'm assuming. So, I mean, there may be things that I say or assume that could be wrong and you can let me know in the comments, but I'm just going off the things that I remember hearing about and trying to relate that to what I'm reading here in the history. Um, so her only regular companions for Qu Queen Victoria, the future Queen Victoria, were her half sister, Theodore and Conroy's two daughters, whom she did not like at all. She did not like those people, those girls. She felt lonely and unloved. Now, the princess's childhood of her German accent, they tried to get rid of that with her her private tutors because they didn't want that German side to swell up. They wanted to kind of suppress all of that. And she was taken on um, to a crowd pleasing tour around the country in a deliberate uh, emulation of what uh, what Elizabeth the first had done. And that's that's interesting. I didn't know that, but they took him around just trying to meet people and to, you know, see who the future queen is going to be and to to like her and to really you know, accept that this is going to be the future of the monarch and kind of doing those things that what they do with the PR today, right? It's no different, but they did it in a different way. Um, the grace and dignity in which, in which at the age of 18, she received the news of her accession to the throne. And she was at Kensington Palace and in the middle of the night, they made a thoroughly favorable impression on the prime minister who was Lord Melbourne. The prime minister basically took charge of the queen and really said, okay, look, we've got work to do essentially. And at the same time, it was clear that Victoria had a mind of her own. She was like, oh no, mm -mm, you're not taking me to tell me what to do. I'm going to do things my way because I'm the queen. <laughs> Essentially is what Queen Victoria was saying. And she uh, once put her mother and Conroy firmly in their places because she knew the power that she held and they could no longer tell her what to do. Queen Victoria, queen Victoria was at, in a position now to make her own decisions. And she wanted to be the one setting the tone rather than the tone being set on her. So she quit sleeping in her mother's bed and she moved into Buckingham Palace is where she went.
She's like, I'm ready to be the queen. And that is where I'm going to stop today. And we're going to continue learning about the life of Queen Victoria, understanding the whole build up to the monarchy that we have today and what they are trying to do over there in Montecito. We're going to be educated about this stuff. We're going to understand what is actually happening so that we can really and rightfully be appalled at the behavior of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. <laughs> okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and leave your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts about us trying to learn more about the history of the British monarchy and where all this stems from and clearly having an understanding about things that we were once in the dark about and knowing that the empire, with the empire, this empire here in which the sun never set is where it will start beginning for us here today where we will be in the light and no longer in the darkness. <laughs>